control measures in the Tennessee and Columbia River Valley. So just Tennessee, Southeast Tennessee. If you look at this map right here, all this area right here, huge program, a big damn program. Uh, there were other programs at the Rural Electrification Administration, but the big thing is not only did it stop the major issue of flooding, it was every spring, massive floods in that area, but it brought electric power to millions of people who were without electricity. And get this down as part of the TVA. A major part of the New Deal was to provide electricity for the rural poor. <laughs> electricity for the rural poor. So it's not just dams, it's also, or dams in the Tennessee. The New Deal will want to do that everywhere with other programs, but we're just going to give you the TVA as one example. We decided, the Royal League. And Rural. The Royal <laughs> the, And You see other dams, other programs, and this is going to be a dramatic increase in the, in the a betterment of the standard of, li of life for so many Americans are things like this. And the thing is this will create jobs to build the dams, but also provide irrigation, and then all that would be electricity. And it would allow for a place with a lot of spare electricity to create something called plutonium. Build the atomic bomb. They would do it in Tennessee and in Washington State because of the Grand Coulee Dam. That's why they did it there, because of electricity. And so, big program. This would be one of Roosevelt's most proudest achievements was the TVA. Another part of the New Deal, the first New Deal, Glass-Steagall. And Glass-Steagall regulated what? Yeah. And this was one of the most important laws. And until much of it was repealed in 2000, this would provide financial stability for the United States. There were no financial panics in the United States from 33, when this law was passed in 1933, Till 2008, no financial panics. When they repealed it in 2000, it took them it took them less than eight years to have a panic, to have a financial disaster. And since they only since they have not brought the law back, another one will happen. It's just a matter of time. You got 20 minutes. Hmm? 33 to 2000. It was repealed in 2000. Well, it did a lot of things for the banking. M heavy regulations. It required the banks to keep money on hand. It put restrictions on who, uh, what kind of loans they would make. In fact, it made banking very boring. Profitable, but not super profitable. That's why they wanted to get rid of it. They finally did. They could make a lot more money when it's a bubble. That's why they wanted it gone. The big things it did, the two big things, it separated basic local commercial banks from the big Wall Street investment banks. Commercial banks are the, just the banks in town. Valley Bank, which is just down on Custer Avenue, because I picked that one because it's nearby. The place where you keep your savings accounts, or you go get a loan for a house or a car. Those are going to be separate from the big Wall Street banks. Put investments. <laughs> The ones that loan money for stocks and bonds that help banks, or these are the banks that help corporations create, uh, make themselves, have their initial stock offering, merge. They do all of these things. These are the big banks like Goldman Sachs, is the most famous one, and commercial banks. They had to be separate because what was happening were investment, the investment banking part of banks were encouraging their investors, encouraging their, their depositors, or using depositors' money to gamble in the stock market. And if the investment bank crashed, the commercial side crashed. So the whole idea was keep these separate. In 2000, they got rid of it, and now we have these huge, massive banks. 
four banks control 80% of all banking in the United States today once they got rid of this. So like Bank of America, City, Corp, Wells Fargo, these massive banks. And they now combined. And that's part of the reason why the crash was so bad in 2008. Because not only did they feel they could gamble even more, but the government came in and bailed them out because they were so big they thought it might destroy the entire financial system. One more thing it created was called FDIC. And FDIC is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. I know I'm sorry sometimes to see these corporation, sometimes it means commission. Why FDR? You didn't do that. This, as long as banks entered the system and allowed Regulation by the federal government through FDIC, deposits, people's deposits will be insurance on. So you won't lose your deposits. Have you ever looked at a bank or see a commercial for a bank and they'll say FDIC, walk into a bank and says FDIC. You look at any billboard for a bank or anything, it says FDIC on it. So they're advertising that your deposits will be insured. So even if the bank goes under, the federal government guarantees that your deposits will be paid. You'll get your money back, at least most of it back. This is really important because the run of the banks, because people were fearful about their deposits, caused the bank panic that nearly brought down the financial system of the world in 33. Never happened again in the US. In 2009, over a thousand banks shut their doors, went under, but there was no panic because of FDIC. So FDIC is really important. That part, they kept. Even though a lot of banks didn't pay in their money they were supposed to, there's all kinds of things going on there. But FDIC is big. If there would not have been an FDIC, that would have caused the panic in 2008, October, November, and it would have come. It would have been bad, <clears throat> really fast. Like as in evolution. <laughs> We'd be living in cardboard boxes by the river. And I'd be your king. Right? Who'd follow me? <laughs> so, that's Glass Steagall. Next, another major part would be called the SEC, and that is the Securities and Exchange Commission. And this goes back. Much like the laws here, this was proposed back in the progressive era. This was, Teddy Roosevelt wanted something like this in the square deal. Securities, that's a term for stocks and bonds. Basically, it's a place to save, have your money be safe or secure. You know, have your money sitting on the coffee table, could be dangerous. You put in bonds, now the money is put away in something safe. Well, this regulates the stock. So it at least tries to limit the illegal stock watering by over or by selling stocks that don't really exist, or selling stocks for companies that don't really exist. It also enforced transparency. Companies must say they must say how much money they actually make. They have to put quarterly, so three, four times a year, four times a year. They must put down their earnings, their revenues, and their profits. And technically, they're supposed to tell the truth. And they also must have some kind of independent accounting firm look into these numbers. So the whole idea is if you're going to be in our stock market, then you have to be honest. No more insider trading. No more playing games with the stocks. You know what insider trading is? Because it's unfair. Let's say if I owned a company, or let's say I was a CEO of a big corporation, and I know we're going to come up with a big new invention, and we're going to announce it tomorrow. What's going to happen to the stock value of my company if I when I announce this big invention that we know people are going to love tomorrow? They will do what? Go up. So let's say I go to Amazon and say, okay, buy, buy our stock today. 
a little bit of money to buy it today. That's insider trading. That's illegal. That's what? That, that's, in, uh, that's insider trading, and that's illegal. Why? Because then it's an unfair to everybody else. So they tell everyone. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't give those kind of tips to one person. you got to tell everybody. The whole idea is, if you're going to trade in the stock market, then we all got to trade oh, with a level playing field. Now, of course, it, it's still going to happen. You know, how do you actually enforce it in your me telling you? But the idea is, it's illegal. Martha Stewart, you went to jail for that. You know who Martha Stewart is? Yeah. She went to jail for that. I don't know. Well, if you combine these two, and there were no huge stock market bubbles that caused a crash. And so they started basically, they started getting rid of and not enforcing the regulations in the 1980s. 87, the first real crash since 1921. I don't know when you heard about that crash, but 87, there was 191, big one in 2000, and then the Titanic one in 2008. We are, we had, it's pretty, it's up and down right now. It's really. I would not want to be a stockbroker right now. This one made banking incredibly dull and boring. It created financial stability until they got rid of it. So that's what they did. Another one that we got to put in this is called the FCC. Do you remember what the FCC is? Yeah, the Federal Communications Commission. What do they regulate? If you say communications, I throw my pen in. And you're yeah. <laughs> but that, at first, it was just the airwaves. Which meant the radio. Remember, this is 1934 when they did this, so it's just radio. But soon it'll be television, and now the FCC regulates any form of mass communication. And it wasn't clear about the internet. The law was vague. The, the Obama administration just recently made its own executive order, how they interpreted the law, and said that the FCC also regulates the internet. Very controversial. The big companies want to basically control the internet by some of the other country, other small companies. So they really oppose that. But uh, that's a big issue. The big the big internet companies or media companies want to make deals with the internet providers so that all the smaller smaller websites or smaller web companies don't get any web space. Bad web space. They can't. You know, well, let's put it this way. If the way it is right now, if if a Democrat is elected president, that will, that will remain. The FCC will regulate that, and that will happen as much as it is already. If a Republican's elected, that rule will be gone, and we just be a few companies. Yeah. So, what did it so it regulated? At first, radio. Then TV, because it regulates the airwaves. But then because we have cable, then eventually it would be laws would they would pass laws to amend this to allow it to regulate cable TV and then the internet. So what did it do for like radio and like how did it regulate? Well it regulates content. Like oh okay. And then the other big thing it, it, you know you have different radio bands, that's called the spectrum. And so it gives certain it, you, these pe people have to rent that. From the people, so they've rented to the FCC, so they could be on whatever broadcast channel they're on. Okay. That they have to actually pay a rent through the FCC. That's how that happens. So you don't have everybody using the same wavelength, and that's why it's you know it costs money, so it's difficult to start a radio station as part of it. Getting that. So these laws are the big ones of the first ones. There's also two other laws that I lumped together. As simply public works programs. And these were laws to provide jobs. We saw these in the list I gave you the PWA, the CWA, Public Works Administration, Civil Works Administration. I don't think these will be on, I'm not going to put these.
The only reason I mentioned public works, these 